There is something magical, almost quintessentially romantic about a kilo bullion bar. It seems that it is the way that bullion was designed to be enjoyed. And on today's video, we're going to talk about kilo bars of silver and how good they really are. everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to all joining us for this week's edition of In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver or gold. And this week we're going to be looking at and talking about the one kilo bar of silver. It's just classic, nay quintessential in its romanticism about bullion and owning bullion, having a bar of bullion, a one kilo bar of silver, that is... You know, it's incredible. It really is. I love these and I love the weight and feel of a kilo bar. Of course, a kilo bar of gold is well out of the reach of the vast majority of people in this world. But a kilo bar of silver is not out of the realms of possibility for everybody. And it's a really satisfying weight size. So we've got two different types here. We've got the Metal Ore 1 kilos and the Umicor 1 kilo bars, both hailing from Europe. We've got the Umicores sort of German based and then of course the Metal Ore which you can see is Switzerland based which adds to the romanticism of course. Uh, of course there are some sort of dodgy sort of darker parts of Swiss metal bullion histories uh, but Swiss gold for example, Swiss banks and bullion depositories are quintessentially what metals are all about and this one kilo Metal Ore bar is an incredibly cool specimen of wonderful silver and of course it's just bullion and I want to address the kind of question in this video about bars versus coins and whether or not bars are better or you know coins have the advantage in terms of taxes and all of that jazz. We'll talk about that as we go uh, but generally speaking I am a big fan of bars. I mean I pour my own silver bars definitely but in terms of bullion weight items I do think that um, having the you know the bigger the better is often really really handy. Certainly uh, in terms of storage, you know these are much easier to store. You don't have to do, worry about sort of milk spotting. Uh, toning is a thing that you might have to worry about, but ultimately it's just bullion weight. So even if it's ding dent scratch, like I you know I'm holding these and just clinking them next to each other, it doesn't matter. They are bullion pieces. Now of course there are some varieties of one kilo bars out there in this world which are a lot more collectible and um, you know some of the rarer varieties of Engelhards for example and things like that they will be a lot more desirable in terms of uh, kind of premiums and stuff and those are things you have to look after but generally speaking a bullion bar, a bar of bullion is just that it's meant to be uh, just a lump of silver in its raw form that you have and that you enjoy and that you invest in basically. Uh, and the wonders of silver, you can see here that there's two different, very different types of shapes of silver bars, yet they are the same weight. You know, one kilo is a kilo, uh, very interestingly, a kilo uh, of 999 silver, of course, 999 being 99.9% .9 silver. One gram of this bar is not silver thereabouts anyway. Of course 999 is the minimum quality guarantee. Sometimes when you have things assayed like I have you'll have higher uh, results than 999. It could be 996 or 997. So but generally speaking 99 silver you know there's there's one gram of this stuff in a kilo that is not silver. So what is it? Who knows? It's just all of the extra elements that are in the general makeup. But I think it's really interesting that uh, you know kilo bars get uh, sometimes a little bit of a bad rep as things that are almost like too big to have. Um, I am on the opposite side of things. I personally am a fan, as I said, of larger bars of silver uh, because I think it's much more practical to store, to have, to hold, to enjoy and invest in. Uh, that said, of course, there are some downsides for having uh, silver as opposed to smaller denominations, uh, silver in a, in a kilo form rather than other denominations. And that is, of course, when it comes to the selling of it at the other end, to sell a kilo of silver, you pretty much have to sell a kilo of silver. Yes, you could chop it up and try and sell the different parts of it, but pretty much chopping it up will destroy any potential uh, value that you might get out of it from a bullion dealer. And of course, if you're going to be selling on the second-hand market, nobody wants to buy a chopped up silver bar unless they're paying well under spot price for it. Uh, so when you are selling it, you do have to think about it in terms of you know the future when you need to release the money that's locked up in this bar. Of course, you're going to have to sell a kilo. Uh, you're going to have to find somebody with the money to buy a kilo. You're going to have to find somebody who wants to buy a kilo bar of silver 
rather than buying just a you know coin or two coins or three coins at a time which is of course a much better budget so there are of course a lot of factors involved in that now for me I have kind of a double way of thinking about it because ultimately if this needs to be melted down in fact I tell a true story so these bars all three of these in fact are uh, they're on the melt chopping block so to speak uh, you know I have of course silver casting grain which I use predominantly but the way the world is going right now, of course, you just don't know where Brexit's going to take us in terms of being able to source silver uh, at a decent price anyway. And these bars that I've got here do represent melt stock that I could take for the backyard bullion business. It would be a real shame, though, to chop them up and melt them down, uh, I have to say. But ultimately, that is one thing that I have in my favour over, you know, Joe Blog Stacker. I can just take this stuff and I can repurpose it if I need to. But for people who just are after that romantic notion of holding and owning a kilo bar of silver um, or just a generally big bar of bullion, a kilo seems to be the kind of quintessential weight. Uh, and it's funny, isn't it? Because like you know, we all work in ounces and you know, coins are all ounces and 10 ounce bars, 10 ounce coins, things like that. But a kilo just seems to be a magical number. 32.15 and a few other decimal points for a kilo of 999 pure silver and uh, it is just that kind of it's easy to get your head around a kilo you know 1000 grams of the shiny stuff and it is really interesting that they are very very popular i like the size as well i mean i, I talk about size and weight and density a lot here on the channel and how silver is very impractical compared to gold uh, one thing that i think everybody should own is uh is something like this. And this is an interesting piece here. This is tungsten uh, and it's a big tungsten cube. And this thing here, oh, it, it's just, it feels like the planet is pulling it towards its core. It's so heavy, it's so dense. And the point I'm trying to make here is that this tungsten cube weighs two and a half kilos. And of course, you look at the difference here, I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling quite how much more dense this is. I don't think it's going to be very easy to replicate on camera just how dense this is and feels. But the point here is that silver is very, very dense uh, and it feels very heavy. But when you put it into perspective of something like gold, which is the equivalent density of tungsten, uh, you can kind of see that storage definitely becomes an issue. And in terms of wealth and value, you know, you're talking about, so we've got three kilos here. In fact, I've got, if I get these two little pieces of tungsten out here as well. So these three pieces of tungsten that I've got all combined weigh just over three kilos. So you've got three kilos of silver here and you can see the volume that they store. And that's going to be, of course, around... Uh, gosh, I can't remember the, the spot prices for kilos at the moment. It's about, it's about 60, 600 pounds a, a kilo at the moment, I think. So you're looking at about 1,800 pounds uh, of value of money that's stored there. If this was gold, if this was a three kilo block of gold, that would be, of course, worth, gosh, like 300,000 pounds, maybe more, something like that. In fact, let's just have a, I'm going to have a quick look at spot price to make sure I've got that right. Um, it, it, you know, the mind actually boggles at quite how much extra value. So it's four thousand, four, sorry, forty-seven pounds a gram right now. So forty-seven times three thousand is a hundred. Sorry, one hundred forty-one thousand. My mental maths doubled it. So you can see there the absolute mental difference between the density and value of something like gold. Now that's going to be, uh, you know, something that I think maybe only the very few ultra rich stacking Saudi princes have to really generally worry about if they're stacking silver and they're stacking one kilo bars. If you've got a huge budget, yeah, it's gonna be weighty. It's gonna be uh, difficult to store. It's gonna be difficult to manage and handle and move and things like that. But for the general lay person, for us plebs down here in the silver slum world where we can aspire to having a giant piece of metal Silver is most certainly one of the most satisfying things that you can have and hold at this weight category. And a kilo is, in my opinion, the best. It's easy to hold. You can pick it up. You can move it. You know, you can get bigger bars. There are 100 ounce bars. There are 5 kilo, 10 kilo, even 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 ounce bars, which is about 32 kilos. I have, I've never seen one in person, but I have seen photos of them. They are heavy. They are big. They are cumbersome. 
They are very impractical. Uh, they, are, they are very easy to hide in plain sight, though. There was a very good story I heard of a bullion dealer, a local coin store, that had a 1,000-ounce bar which he painted black and just used as a doorstop. And just customer after customer would walk past it day after day and never realise that they were walking past something quite so valuable. So, I don't know, there's, there's definitely uh, schools of thought for both and there's definitely arguments to be had for both bars and coins and different types of bars and different weights of bars. But in terms of the you know general selection, there are countless myriad of uh, different styles. The metal ore ones here are slightly different. Now, one thing that you'll have noticed, which I haven't really talked about, is the finish on these two bars are slightly different. This one, I've actually personally sanded down with some very fine sandpaper and polished because I like having things shiny. These metal ores have this kind of almost like matte finish to them. Um, so at the moment I haven't decided whether I'm going to clean them up and polish them up and do things with them, but um, they, they certainly are very cool in their own right here. But my kind of inner OCD person, uh, he, he wants it clean, he wants it shiny, he wants all of the bar to look like these parts here rather than the matte finish. So maybe I'll do that one day and we'll sort of see how it looks. But um, generally speaking, massive fan of big chunky silver pieces. One kilo bars are definitely my kind of favorite and uh, it would be kind of cool to have a collection of these uh, kind of cast silver bars over time. These are the only two kilo versions that I've got. I do have an Engelhard 50 ouncer and a Baird & Co 100 ouncer but kilo wise these are the only two right now but they are very very attractive I have to say. So let me know your thoughts on these bars down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on a kilo size bar in the comment section as well. It'd be very interesting to get your thoughts on it and see what you think about them. Otherwise, that is it from me today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.